Hey everyone, Jagtagger93 here with another really good one to look at today. It's Nutrax 4571's Demon Astery. It was released in October this year, 2018, and it really is a fantastic wad. It really is a shining example of so many fundamental components to map making for Doom. The end result here is a wad that's a lot of fun to play through for players of all experience levels. So the readme file states that this map is set in a crumbling monastery made of marble and corpses. And that's literally very, very correct. Now we're not talking about some medieval castle with some gory bits and bodies here and there. Oh no. There's guts and bones literally acting as insulation for the stone walls along the monastery's interior. There are some beautifully gruesome details throughout this map that really show this. In the distance are towers, walls, and other structures whose only real purpose is to further establish the aesthetics of the map. The author uh, could have easily had this map's border be the play area, and strictly that, with absolutely nothing beyond it. A lot of authors actually do do that. However, the author took the time to design the macro and micro details here. The macro, for example, being those towers in the distance, those rocks, those other structures we see in the distance that we can't quite get to, but are just meant to, you know, convey the theme of this monastery here. And some of the micro details, the little nooks and crannies, the cracks, the little streams of blood in the walls and the granite. Really great stuff. Now nothing turns me off faster than a plain, spartanly designed Doom Wad in 2018. Wads, especially made today, should strive to look this good. And not only does this wad look great, but the areas for the most part have succeeded in something that is really hard to pull off in Doom. Uh, the areas look realistic, but also enhance the gameplay. This is achieved through intelligent enemy and item placement. Early on, you can see exactly what I mean. In the beginning of this map, you'll find a revenant lurching over a rampart. Your best weapon at this time, and in this moment, is your shotgun. Yes, you can take it out from a distance with some skill with the shotgun, but to maximize damage with that weapon, you want to be a bit closer. Also, being a bit closer means the revenant will have a hard time getting at you with its rockets. They'll probably just hit the uh, stone wall right in front of it. And it's very tempting to just get up to the bony boy, but be careful. Because to the right, there's an opening that's full of soldiers whose weapons will make the unwary player in Swiss cheese. And now another example of this fundamental level design aspect at work is right after you get the super shotgun. On ultraviolence, after getting it, you have to fend off two revenants in a very small area. Now this may seem like a daunting task, and it really would be, if not for your recently acquired double-barreled boomstick. Experienced players will appreciate how there's just enough room to evade while delivering the two or three necessary blasts from the boomstick that are necessary to fell each revenant. Meanwhile, new players will quickly learn the same lesson. Uh, running is not advised here. Trying to get out through the elevator means the revenants will probably decimate you with the rockets. Now, I'm also a huge fan of wads that use unaccessible items to tempt player exploration. Early in this map, you'll see a plasma rifle that's just too far out of reach and later you'll see a BFG that's behind bars. In between some heavy combat, it is recommended that the players stop and smell the roses, as it were, and appreciate the details of this wad as they explore for paths to these weapons. Uh, the BFG puzzle, by the way, is especially really well done. I really like that. Uh, the progression to the wad is very solid. Exploration is welcome and sometimes rewarded very nicely, while the pace overall is pretty linear. The flesh-lined rooms, which I assume are supposed to be the inside of the monastery, are an ominous warning of what's coming for you at the very end. The squad can be appreciated best on ultraviolence. However, it's A-OK -okay to play this one initially and hurt me plenty to really get a feel for the level. The challenge is just right and gradually increases on all skill levels. And really, there isn't a whole lot to complain about with this one. If I had to nitpick, I'd bring up that in some very small areas. There's some industrial paneling and wires that kind of clash with the theme. Again, it's very, it's really not noticeable, and the colors kind of mesh, so you really have to look for it. Also, the first key room, while not too hard and much easier than the third key room, is a bit harder than the second room. I know I just praise the difficulty progression with this one, and for the most part, it's pretty solid, but in the first key room, there's three revenants and some demons. In the second one, there's two hell barons and some demons, I think, specters. And if I had a choice between fighting three revenants on pedestals, or two Hell Barons. Yeah, I'm picking the Bruiser Brothers every time. Seriously. I mean, maybe it's just me, but uh, fighting the Revenants in that small area with their homing rockets, not impossible, but a bit tr more trickier than fighting the two uh, 
Hell Barons, whose attacks are much more linear and predictable. But anyway, like I said, those are some very, very, very minor nitpicks with the squad. Overall, Demon Astry earns a very, very, very high 9 out of 10, and I'll throw in three mysterious eyeballs for an overall score, by my math, of 96%. This one is a must-play, simply put. And that's all I really have to say about it. Thank you all so much for watching. This is Jagtagger93 signing out. Y'all have a good one.